And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylics. I'm still muted? Not now. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> you were muted until that very moment. Ah, oh, okay, so. Now you're live. Now we're live. Hey, now hi. Hi, everybody. Hey, well, we're live. All right, it's gonna do a big wave here. Wave and, over uh, here. Wave over here to John. <laughs> wave over here to you. Do the Queen's Wave. You remember that? Queen's uh, Wave? Ah, the Queen's Wave. So, you know, what we're going to be doing tonight, and we'll get right down to it, is we're going to be painting an angel that was uh, created by Vincent Van Gogh. And the genesis of this for me was that uh, one of our Academy members, who's been with us for several years, wrote and uh, told me that her husband had been in a terrible uh, collision in Norway. and. Some big semi-truck had caused the accident, but it was a pile-up, and her husband was permanently paralyzed, and it's multiple injuries, and it's iffy, and um, she hopes he'll be able to keep his um, IT job if, should he recover enough to do that. So, you know, it kind of reminds you that, you know, things happen, and sometimes we need an angel in our life, and so maybe you're going to paint this for yourself. Maybe you might want to give this as a gift for somebody for the holidays, or maybe tomorrow. You don't know. But this is sort of my friend Nancy Eaton. I'm dedicating this Erton. I'm dedicating this to her and her husband. You know, this is the genesis of this painting. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to. We're going to trace it on, and uh, we're going to try and paint it tonight. And I love Vincent Van Gogh. I thought we could get away with this and do it because he does all these very, very defined brushstrokes. And I think you're going to get this easily. It it may seem complicated at first, but we're going to break it down going to get it easily. Tonight I'm going to show you a little bit more about breaking down shapes. Certain things everybody gets really well and there's a few things that really stump people and we're going to talk about that. You know, if you have a question for the artist, this came up last night, someone tried about 15 times to ask me a question and YouTube blocked them because apparently, put them in capital letters. If you have a really burning question, you know, you can always email us before the show. Um, a day or two before the show is best, so we remember you, but um, I'm just saying, you know, stuff happens to us, but, you know, we would try. But anyway, you can uh, contact us at gingercooklive.gallery. You don't have to be a member to ask me a question. And if, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to answer it on the show if it's, you know, that kind of thing. And um, there you have it, okay? So those are some things that we're going to do. And John is going to put the picture of the angel up in the corner so that you can see it. And... I've done, what size canvas did we pick, John? It's 11 by 14. By this here. is 11 by 14. Slightly larger than my traceable, but I think we can make it work. We're just going to make it a little wider. It, look like it's, it looks to me like it's an angel, you know, looking through a window, all right? And the colors are kind of neat. So what, if John would be so kind. Incidentally, let's just take a moment here and uh, thank our moderators for uh, helping us out. And, uh, you know, those guys volunteer their times every time we do a live show. They probably have other better things to do, but they hang out with us. And so give a shout out to our moderators. And uh, they also, you know, kind of keep the trolls out so that you guys can have a good time. You may find us playing a little trivia. We chat on these live shows. If you're a person that, you know, and this is not a fault. You know, some people need no extra chatter. They just need the lesson and they need to total focus. And I may seem to go fast for people. You can slow it down after the recording's up. You can slow this down. How do you slow it down, John? Up under the gear, on the lower right-hand corner, you'll have a three-quarter, half, and quarter speed. So that's something. Besides pausing, you can slow it down. And if you really just like the, if you're a purist and you just need the lessons, occasionally when we're traveling, we'll put up, you know, kind of just, uh, you know, just me. But my oh, over 350 lessons, almost 400 lessons now on our website, have just me, my voice talking to you. Like it's a personal art lesson, like I'm sitting right next to you, talking to you about how to paint. And of course, we encourage you to try our, our website. We go from the very never painted before beginners. Sometimes we get people saying, gosh, um, 
your stuff looks too complicated. Listen, we break it down to the one cookie lessons, the two cookie, the box of cookies, and oh my gosh, you're kidding. Really, we're going to paint that <laughs> kind of lessons. We have it for everybody, and you'll be surprised how fast you move up um, if you you know try our techniques. So that being said, John, if you'd be so kind as to scoot right down to our thing. We went ahead and... Um, uh, I sanded this afterwards, but we went ahead and just did a little Payne's Gray and toned the canvas, all right? And now I've got a, a here's a black and white printout of my picture, all right? And I'm going to kind of just center it a little bit here. I'll probably move this up about like that, okay? So th that's how I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to tape it down in the corners. And let's just, just like that. I want to make sure I've got this. Make sure that you've got it square, though friends. You know, like this is, you don't get that cattywampus. I like that no word? cattywampus. Cattywampus means crooked, in case some of you are thinking. You know, I learned English in school and nobody told me that word. What, you know, there's some words, you know, back in the day when Cinnamon and I, I love that, don't you love that back in the day, that translates into years ago when we were young and Cinnamon was like nine or ten. That's my daughter, the Archerpa. Oh, don't you love that, my daughter, the archer? But how strange. You know, this was Cinnamon, okay? The kid, <laughs> all right? This is before she became any Sherpas. Okay, any Sherpas. <laughs> no whatever Sherpas her here. deal is now. Wait, 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 wait. What? Is that parallel? Is it? No? Is this, this parallel? folder doesn't think so. How about now? Nope. Well, you know what? I'm going to get out a T-square. <laughs> it's right in front of you. It is. Look at that. It's, it's, it, it's. Knowing that you would need it. I'm going to get out a T-square and do this. Line it up like, here, turn it over like this so it catches the edge. Look at that. That's pretty square, no. John. Uh, that's a quarter inch off. Slide it up. Up. No, slide it. I'm not going to slide it up. What? <sighs> on this end? On this end, right here. Well, look, I'm looking at this edge. I mean, this is this is you know don't ask me to build your house but I'm looking at this edge this looks this looks good to me right here that's good you're just confused because well you moved it it was fine I drive him nuts okay <laughs> okay there we go all right you're gonna do better than me right <laughs> um, but I don't I'm not square here now I mean I'm, I've got too big of a thing on I gotta center this a little more see too much on room on this side. These are the things that you got to think about, right? All right, let's just plan B. Let's just start over. But that's okay. That's that. Listen, it's good. Okay. This is the hardest part of the whole thing, right here. Y years ago, when I was, I was Cinnamon's dad, we were building a house in California. I'm just going to lean it up here and make the extra on the bottom. That's easy. I can see that. How are we doing here? Over here, about like yay, about like they. There, that's going to work. Okay. I just had to get it down so that looks about the same on both sides, close enough for government work. Yeah, is it? Close enough. All right. This is slightly horizontal. They're asking us the picture is horizontal. It is a horizontal picture, very slightly. It's very, there, very it's almost was almost square. We didn't have a square canvas, so you know what I mean? So we're just <laughs> doing it this way. We gotta go with what we got. We're going with what we got. That's it. Is it is slightly wider than it is high. First thing we're gonna do is test the um, test the veracity of the transfer paper. Ooh, big word. Yeah, there, it's, that's working. And uh, make sure that it's where we want it. Yep, it's gonna be like that. Okay, so now, once we've decided that's good, then we're going to go ahead and tape it down here so it's not moving on us. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, we were, talki we were talking before I got kind of sidetracked, trying to level everything, you know. Sorry. Um, all the details. <laughs> I apologize. It's all right, no, no, it's, it's helpful, right? We're gonna come along here like this using a T-square get a straight line. I'm going to say there's this one here like that. And I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Now, may, may I say something before you do that? Sure. That is a two eight and a half by 11s put together and the sheet of paper, your yellow is only eight and a half by 11. I don't know which way you have it in, under there. Yeah, but I don't need this edge. I know what this is. Oh, I understand that. But do you have a vertical or horizontal? I have a wide. Okay. I have a wide. All right. I just need a general gist of what I need here. See? Oh, yeah. you, you know what you're doing. I do. Sometimes. I uh -huh. quietly sit in the back of the room with me and my bear. That's right. Just back there in the peanut gallery, you. All right. So I'm going to put my glasses on so I could possibly see something. I'm going to start with his head. And I'm pushing pretty hard. I'm using a pen so I can see where I've been. 
All right, and you've kind of done two pieces of paper together, didn't you, to do this? I did what? You, you've got two pieces of paper well, taped yes. together. I, did you not realize it's bigger than 8.5 by 11? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I don't think about these things, John. <laughs> the nose is really important, you guys. And you've got to be careful. It would be very easy to get this looking like a female angel. Uh, but men's jaws tend to be a little bit more square, okay? So I want you to just think about that for a minute. Um, you know, you, you want to get that, you want to really take some care with the face. Um, we're coming up here like this around with his, um, This stuff, the wings are kind of important. <laughs> kind know? of, that is an angel. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. The wings are kind of important. So you kind of want to get that. And then he's got his um, kind of a collar. It almost looks like he's wearing a robe you might see in church. But, you know, Vincent van Gogh's uh, father was a, a Protestant minister. And the family was extremely religious. And... Um, one of the reasons they were now thinking he did not commit suicide was because in that family that he would have been raised a that would have been considered are you kidding me no one's doing no no one does that in our family kind of thing right all right so we're going to come down here how how low let me just move this i may have to move my paper down a little bit like this and like this, and then I'll move it back up here, like this. And then I'm moving this over here like this, and uh, moving that over here like this, make sure I got that. Let's see how I did, what have I forgotten? Hmm. Well, we got some stuff, we got something going here. I just want a few marks to sort of indicate where it's all going to be. I don't think you really need them, quite frankly. I think you're going to be fine without these. I, I think you can overmark stuff. I think if, and if you were slightly different, it wouldn't matter. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're going, yeah, I don't know, Ginger, but tr trust me, you'd be okay. I think, I feel like you would be. Well, you're certainly not trying to create a forgery. No, you know, and people would know that just figured out we're doing acrylic. That'd be their first clue that it wasn't really a <laughs> forgery. Now over here we've got another hand that's coming, fingers coming down like this. Kind of a little fist. Not sure why the angel's hand's in a fist. And here's the a sleeve. Want to get that. Yeah, okay, and this is going... I want some general directions, if that makes sense, of where the lines are going. See, they're going down like this, but then they're going at this angle. So it doesn't hurt to remind yourself of the direction of the brush strokes. It's kind of, he, he's doing like the flow of the fabric, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Now let's see if we take this off, kind of lift that up. Well, we're in pretty good shape here, kids. Yeah, you did good. Yeah, I think we did good. We'll make sure we have the face really well. Okay. All right, so that's about the, much, the most information I'm going to get out of this. Now, somebody's saying, where did you get that transfer paper? We have a link on our website to write to Amazon. If you use our link, that helps us. Um, it doesn't cost you any more. And it's a, if you want to do us a favor, please use our links. And I like this because it comes with five colors. And if you need, you could tape a couple pieces together if you needed something larger. So Ralph also comes that, that also comes in a roll. But honestly, a roll could last you 50 years because you can use the same paper over and over again. Okay. So that once you know that, then um, now somebody asked me last night to show you my setup for my uh, I, iPad. I've got a regular iPad holder like this, and here's my iPad. Okay. And what I like about it is I can do this. You see how I can blow up the face? Why you want to use an iPad to draw from is extremely nice. 
because where you're not sure about something, you can you can get it bigger. Okay, so we're going to divide. We're going to put our paints out now. And um, I started to talk to you a little bit about language. You know, I, the thing of it is, is that we appreciate the fact that we have so many people from around the world watching and understand that English is not your first language and you learn a bunch of different words. And I remember um, reading a book one time that had been translated from Italian to English. And I didn't know any of those English words. You know, it's like in high school or something. I had to look up most of them. You know, the, every time I, all kinds of words I'd never heard of because there's millions of words, and there's ones that we commonly use in our voc everyday life and our vocabulary, and some we don't. And um, so, you know, sometimes we'll we'll say something, and we and I try to translate. You know, because I pr appreciate the fact that, you know, I I really admire the fact that anybody speaks more than one language. It's jo John and I are always impressed. So we're gonna put. I'm more than impressed. And, and when you come around the country, we have like, uh, certain areas of the country have certain words. Like, for instance, I first came to Texas. Normally, if you're not sure about something and where I came from in Washington State, you grew up in Washington State, you said, very politely, you said, um, excuse me, which means I don't have any clue what you just said, you know? Yeah. And you say it with a certain inflection, excuse me? You know, and then excuse me means are you out of your mind? I understood what you said, and that's really insulting. Did you really mean to say that, right? But in Texas, what I found they said, which was kind of cute, was they'd say, "Do what now?" Do what now? Do what now? All but one all word one though. word. Do yeah. what now? Do what now? Do what now? Which means, what do you want me to do now? Are you kidding me? You know, do what now? Do what now? And then the other thing that they used to say that was kind of new to me when I came to Texas was. Um, said, you know, I think I'm going to go do this, is how I would have said it in Washington State, up there by Seattle, you know. And they say, I'm fixing to go do this, which oh, is kind of cute. I'm fixing to go do it. I think that's kind of cute, actually, but, you know, that's what they said. Put out a little white, a little purple, a little cad red, cad red medium, a little cad yellow medium, a little yellow oxide. Kind of our, you know, our, our, um, our familiar friends which we pretty much do in every painting. This, nothing changes too much for us, does it, huh? You know, you could, uh, n though, I'm, I'm not against buying everything they have at the art store, but sometimes you can get so many colors, you just start sitting and spinning because you can't remember what any of them did. But if you learn how to mix the colors, which is always a good plan, then you pretty much can get the colors you want. You only have to occasionally buy an unusual one. Like, for instance, normally we don't use Payne's Gray. He had a lot of black in this, and I felt we had to do it. If you don't have Payne's Gray, you can use black and ultramarine blue. Mix those two together. If you didn't have that, you could use purple and ultramarine blue and make a pretty nice, a tiny bit of cad red with it and make a pretty nice dark background too. And that would work and might even have a little more life to it because black has a tendency to... Uh, kind of make things a little duller. So, and then, you know, there's different kinds of black. There's lamp black, and um, I have to say, I'll give my daughter credit. She did a whole video on, like, the five different kinds of black. I use black so seldom I have to look it up when I'm trying to decide which, bl which black I need. Usually, a, I, I don't particularly care if it's shiny or flat, but sometimes it makes a difference. For instance, if you were doing an abstract, you might make a very interesting painting having some flat, real dull flat areas and some very shiny areas. So that's yellow oxide. Um, here's a little burnt umber and our next, our last um, uh, thing we're going to want is um, uh, cad red medium, which I put somewhere. Isn't that right in front of you on the canvas? There it is. I, put, I knew I put it somewhere. It wasn't there. Isn't that funny? I looked all over for the pencil sharpener. It was like an inch away from me. And um, there you go. It would snake and bit you. Yeah, did your mother used to say that? Oh, a, a snake would bite you. Yeah. Like, why would you want a snake to bite me? If I'd done something to offend you today that you have not shared yet. You know? We had a question as to where did you get your fancy iPad holder? Um, I found that on Amazon some years ago. That and I like it because it, it, um, it, you can turn it around and, and it's very, very heavy. I guess what we could do is look up past purchases, John. On you know, probably about three years ago, we'd have to look it up, and I could, See you know, you have a new update uh, that's, one for your new bigger iPad too. Yeah, and you might want to yeah update for the bigger one. This just barely fits, but it does work. And then I listen. I've got four or five iPad holders, you know, because we're, we're big fans of it. I've got you know great ones. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to take some tape. 
Oh, someone asked, they love your uh, your hand-painted shirt and wondered if you're ever going to consider painting a shirt on the show. Well, you know, I would paint a shirt on the show because it's really fun to do. I like painting shirts. The problem is I don't think anybody would watch it. The only people, <laughs> thing you guys ever seen want to watch is flowers. I mean, I we had some great, you know, suitcase things that we painted, all kinds of stuff. Everybody goes, ho-hum, boring, boring, doesn't want to watch that, you know. But, uh, you know, and then if you want to know how to paint a ta paint tube, I've got a speed painting about that, don't I, John, up there? You can see uh, me. You, I think so. Yeah, there's a, tu a paint tube speed painting that I've got that shows you how to paint one of these paint tubes. Basically, what you do is you lay a, a, a brush like this on the T-shirt, and then you tape around it. <laughs> um, and you got to wash. Here's the thing. If you're going to paint a T-shirt, you must wash them first because they've got sizing on them. Paint won't stick. You don't have to use any kind of fancy stuff. You can use any kind of acrylic. You could use the you know the flow acrylic or whatever you got doesn't really matter but you do want to um, here we're going to burnish the tape down this is what this is called i like to say squishing but we're going to burnish it okay uh, we have a couple comments first we'd like to thank miss brooke for the donation miss brooke thank you so much how did she do that john she did that with the super chat there uh miss ginger the little dollar sign underneath the, where you get to say something yeah and you can press that and make a small donation you can also do the donations right directly on our website. And also, is the burnt umber and burnt sienna labels in the wrong spot, or is the paint in the wrong spot? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> so right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, good good that, catch, friends. That was from um, Marty. Hey, Marty, caught that one. Marty, you've just won yourself a free downloadable video. Let John <laughs> ask, ask John what's one you won. Congratulations, Marty. Hey, hey, hey. You just want to just tell us what Marty's already takes classes from us, so you've just won yourself a free downloadable video. All right. Woo. She's already a member of our academy. Okay, so now we're going to be doing some up and down stuff, yeah? So one of the things we've got to paint, there's a couple of colors that we want to paint here. So we're going to take a little bit of purple and a little bit of phthalo blue, okay? And we're going to take some white, and we're going to put it over here like that, and put some of that in it. Like that makes sense. Now a little bit of yellow. See that? I'm going to kind of gray this out. A little more thalo blue. Okay. All right. So far, so good. All right, that's pretty good. A little bit more yellow in it. A little more thalo blue. A little bit more white. Oops, I didn't want all that purple. That's kind of that's kind of the color I want. Try a little yellow oxide. I want a little bit more white, maybe. Yeah, we'll like get thank it. Deborah for the donation. Deborah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We, John we, and I we, really we appreciate that. We just made a that. $300 dollar order today. <laughs> oh yeah, we went and went mad shopping on. Um, well, they have half price on the uh, on the small Matisse tubes of Matisse on on Jerry's, and you know, honestly, Jerry doesn't give me a dime for sharing this with you, but I just love you guys, and I want you to get the deals, and that's what I went out and bought. I went out and bought the, these instead of you know eight dollars a tube were like under five, right? Like yeah. half price, and they had free shipping over thirty five dollars. So we, of course, we went way over that, but the intent was good, wasn't it? So I've got the paint like that, and I think I want to. Oh, we'd like to thank Elizabeth for the donation for the scholarship fund. <gasps> Elizabeth, she, thank you. That's how she would like her donation used. Scholarship fund. All right. So now we want to go up and down like this. Now, John, could I turn this like this? Would that screw, screw you up as you far as... You can do whatever you want. All right. I, I for, for one, think it might be easier to do this, right? So I'm going to go right off the thing with a little, uh, just a little brush that like this. That would be called a palette knife. Yeah, this is a little palette knife. Good catch, John. That's exactly what this is. Nobody can, you're just, grass doesn't grow under your feet. I'm telling you what. Okay. Well, you know, somebody may not know what a thing is. Yeah, I know. Um, it's a good word. If you don't um, speak a lot of languages, just learn the word thing in all kinds of languages. Probably you can get away with a lot. I need that thing over there. See? Point, thing, say thing. And they're going, then they guess, try to imagine what thing it is you want. Get further than just pointing, right? Shows you're trying. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right, so I, I just want to kind of do this and uh, get some lines going up and down like this, some short ones and some longer ones, kind of skinny lines like this, kind of indicate maybe some wood grain. All right, like that. There you go. And then on the edge here, 
he had this pretty light here on the edge. I don't know why. I think he'd, he'd cover that with the frame. But listen, I'm just following what we got here, right? Now we're going to do the same thing over here. I'll show you the difference when you... Um, now, I'm going to come this way, make sure that I'm covering, covering the... Um, this right over the edge of the tape. Never shove a brush underneath the tape this way. Just try to but overlap a little bit in a few places. Now let's put a little water on this brush so it's a little bit skinnier. And uh, now this is just phase one of this. Does, it, does that make sense? Well, this is just phase one of our wood grain. But you got to get something block. on here, so we're, we're going for that, right? For those of us that are just joining, those of you just joining, it is a Payne's Gray on the background. Straight okay. out of the tube. Okay, so we just we did that and just kind of traced did a you know quick trace of the our angel on that. Okay, now um, that's all good. Yeah. Now uh, what I might do is just put that back. Your blues aren't mixed up, are they? They, they look right. Ultramarine blues labeled right in Sela. Yep, it is. Yeah, those I think so. Right. Maybe it isn't. It's not. You got those backwards too. I do. It's backwards. Man, tonight. this is a. Con this is I this I feel like a contrary in the movie with the little bighorn. Remember Dustin Hoffman? That's why. Okay, let's try a little phthalo now. Oh yeah, so much better. Look at that. Okay, I'm adding a little phthalo. Just boy, I'm really struggling. Okay, so I'm gonna put just do a few more of these little colors. I want some brown with that. Then if I do that, put a little brown with that. A little bit of burnt umber. It's 4 a.m. in Israel. Just in case you were wondering. Gosh, I, well that's dedication. <laughs> That is dedication. We love it. Um, 7 p.m. in Canada. It's 8 a.m. in Central Time for us. I actually, I have a, had a very good friend that saw an angel. I've had several friends that have actually seen angels in person. I know that gets a little weird for people, but I, you know, I don't think they were delusional. They weren't on peyote or anything. They, I don't think they were making it up. I had one friend that. Um, we were visiting, I'm going to kind of, their name shall be made, I'm making this pretty vague, we were at a friend's house and she did, um, uh, she was a person that had angel statues in her driveway, on her house, and she had murals, and she had, if there was an angel anything anywhere, she owned it, and it was somewhere to the lamps, and I mean, it was just over the top with angels, and what she had. And then uh, I'm going to put a little paints gray out. I know you well, I put that back, but I think I want a little paints gray too. So anyway, um, my friend was um, had been trying for several years to get pregnant, and was hysterical. She was no longer she wasn't getting pregnant. She felt you know once some moron came out with an article back in about I don't you remember when this was John some somebody I should, they should be shot came out and talked about how it was very difficult for women over 30 to get pregnant. Oh, yeah. And that, that yeah. they had a biological clock and it was yeah. running out like the doomsday clock. And I mean, and women started feeling like it was doomsday. If they weren't pregnant by 30, they were done. Yeah, And then, exactly. you know, good luck with that, right? And um, that kind of thing. And um, so anyway, the, the I'm gonna, I've got a little paints gray in here and we're just going to knock back some of this, okay? Um, there we go. Just a few little short strokes in here too while we're talking. So anyway, and so we were both had been had lined up for a massage, and, uh, and she had gone before me, and and the, the gal Chris was on the phone uh, with the clients, and so she had waited just to say hi to me before you know we just happened to be using the same person who's doing these massages right out of her house, and her massage Chris's massage room had um, again angels everywhere, and she had this shelf kind of high shelf and she had all these all these little knickknacks and stuff right um, of angels and yard row angels and all that stuff so it's interesting it, you know a lot of you know I'm looking at that going well it's her dusting it not me that's my first thought when I'm seeing this kind of stuff right yeah that's all very nice till somebody has to clean it right <laughs> so um, uh, anyway uh, so I'm, I don't know I was looking out the window or something and my friend says oh my gosh she says look at this she said it's the most beautiful thing, and I knew she felt the same way about ceramic things as I did. You know, the kind of you know dust collectors is kind of the you know with the reason we were good friends, right? So she says, "Look at this! It's just amazing." Can you guy? That is the prettiest thing I have ever seen in my life. And so we look. She says, "There's this uh, angel. She's carrying this baby, and it's, it was about I don't know about three inches tall." 
She says, that is so stunning. She says, I've got to find out where she got that. I want one of those. Which was a shock because my friend didn't buy anything like that. So I'm looking and I look at where? And she says, on the shelf. And I'm looking and I'm going, where? It's right up there on the shelf. I said, I don't see anything. So um, there was nothing there. But nothing she saw this, saw. Th nothing that I saw, right? But she saw it, right? And we were, we were just going, wasn't that interesting? I said, you know, because I'll tell you what, um, uh, I, mean, I really thought, thought that was an amazing thing. And I said, I'll tell you what, if a, if a full-size angel showed up like this in your house one day and said, by the way, you're going to get pregnant, um, you'd jump out the window. Do you know what I mean? It's scary. Yeah, that's about the only thing. That, that's about, as, about the only thing that they could talk to you and have you not freak, you know? So it wasn't three months later that she wasn't pregnant yet. She says, do you think I'll ever get pregnant? I'm going, man, I didn't even see the angel, and I believe you're getting pregnant. <laughs> she says, what does it take? What do they have to do? Send you a telegram? You know? And um, she, um, anyway, she was pregnant within the following week. She was pregnant within the following week. She got pregnant. All right, now up here at the top, we're going to just kind of flatten out. It's a little darker up here at the top. Now I'm chatting with you kind of fooling around here, but it's a little darker. We're just going to kind of take a little of that Payne's gray and go over this a little bit. If you haven't sanded your canvas doing this, please do, because otherwise it's going to be a little harder to paint. See how I'm just kind of knocking some of that back, and we can come back and do that, but just a little bit up here at the top. I'm going to go over this. This is kind of the kind of thing that requires a little bit of, um, um, you know, painting, you know, as we're telling. But I thought that was a very good angel story. N n none of them have ever shown up at my house. But, you know... Um, hey, what do you think I am? Well, yeah, that's true, John. See? See? You did show up at my house. He is an angel. I'm telling you what. Just exactly the person that needed to show up at my house showed up, right? There you go. You know, just, um, wow, that's right, John. That's absolutely true. It makes me tear up. Okay, now. All right, so we're going to... You ready for this? Are you impressed with the tape? Wow, look how sharp that line is. Yeah, it's not shabby, huh, you guys? And that's look. why you use tape. And that's not cheating, people. No, there can be more to this, but this is the step one in the tape. All right, so now we're, we're still in these colors. Do you see that? We're going to add a little bit more yellow and phthalo blue now that we've, we've, we've done the... Um, get a little bit of yellow and phthalo blue right to this. See that? We've got this sort of green color. And what we need to do is come this way with this green color. Let's put a little Payne's gray in it, just a tiny bit, and dirty it up, just a hair. Okay, there we go. We're going to come this way with the now these brush strokes. The direction of these brush strokes. Let's dirty this up, just a hair. The the direction of these brush strokes making difference. You're going to come around this way and let some of that underpainting show through. It's all right. Let some of that um, underpainting show through like that. Don't worry if you mix it all exactly. It's a little bit darker on this side, so we're going to add a little more blue to that. And uh, this side seems to be a little bit deeper and maybe a little more paints gray in it. There we go. Going to just come down this side like that and bring this, bring your brush strokes in this way. Now, there's a couple of tricks we can do with this, all right? All right, we can put the paint on thick enough where you could take like um, da -da -dum -dum -dum, a sharp palette knife and you could scrape out lines like this, which will work. You see, particularly if you're, um, I don't have a very thick layer of paint on here, so I'm going down to the canvas, so that won't work for me. But if you put a thick enough layer of dark underneath it, that would definitely work for you, okay? I think I need to put some tape back here so I don't run into my... Here, let's, let's do that. Let's kind of protect that like that. And there, kind of, then we got a little more room here. But this is where... So anyway, that's my angel story. Do you have an angel story, John? Um, well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I do. Do you? It's more of, a, more of my own guardian angel. Oh, we want to hear that. Oh, yeah. This is back in the uh, teenage days when you, you, know, you, you think you know everything. And we used to, uh, say, take the car out um, when the parents were gone before we were a driving age. <laughs> and just kind of drive around, you know, have fun, you know, typical stuff, teenage kid stuff. And one, one night my friend called me up and said, hey, let's go driving. I go, 
I don't think tonight we need to go. He goes, no, no, let's go. I go, no, I'm going to pass. Well, he got caught. I didn't because I didn't go. My little guardian angel said, don't go out tonight. Stay home. So then you went with a gut feeling. Yep. Some sort of little voice said, don't go. Yep, I have little voices that always guide me and say, don't do something stupid. I want you to see how I'm changing the direction now of the brush strokes. Do you see this? You guys, do you see I'm going this way? You're kind of following it around the, the kind halo. Kind of following it around, changed it around. It, it kind of following it this way, almost like a halo. And it's a little bit more green. You just kind of see how I'm doing that? And if you look closely at his painting, it's all very short strokes. You have real short strokes. All right, so we're doing that. And then we need this to come out this way. And I want this a little darker. And I'm going to go over the tape. This tape's a little better here if I have the... There we go, like that. And then I'll take an angle brush little short little angle brush and I'll come back in here with a little Payne's Gray and um, while this is kind of still wet and do some little short brush strokes like this um, like that you know it doesn't have to be exactly like his it just I think it's going to be very effective he was very anyway his Vincent Van Gogh's you know deal was like the family was really religious you know in fact, he actually went to seminary school and studied to be a minister. Some of you have heard, if you haven't, if you've watched my Starry Night video, I have lots of information about him. But what was interesting to me about it, right, was what he did. That's a little bit thicker than I want, so I'll come back. And did he ever finish up being a minister? Yeah, he did it. He actually went, and, and because he was, he was a newbie, newbie, they sent him to this congregation kind of in uh, Holland and... Um, and it was the poor section of town. Now his parents were middle class, okay? Uh, his parents were middle class. Um, before he became, it was a minister, he went and he sold, his uncle had a big fancy um, uh, art company in Paris and sold paintings for different artists. And Van Gogh and uh, Vincent Van Gogh and his younger brother both went to work for their uncle when they got out of school. The problem is that, that Vincent wouldn't lie about the artwork, okay? His um, uncle just had some pretty fantastic stories he'd tell about the artwork, and Vincent, you know, being raised in a religious family, was not willing to lie about it, right? Which really hacked his uncle off, but he couldn't really say, well, you have to lie, but then it got worse because he started not just not lying, but he started telling the truth, which is, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> kind he, of he started volunteering information, and he, thought he made it about three years before he got fired. And so they decided, well, if you have such a bent on being righteous, you know, like that was a bad thing, um, uh, you know, you should th th go to seminary school. So they sent him to seminary school. So he ends up in the, I told the story before, but it's such a good one. So he ends up in these uh, kind of slums in the city. And he's really shocked by the conditions and how poor people are because it, 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 today that's not hard to find. But it, um, let's see, we, let me just... Um, Hey, we'd like to thank Yvonne for the donation. And she says, so glad you're back. Missed you both. Hope you had a great breakaway. We did. We didn't break away. We keep working. Yeah, we keep working. We were 24-7. We're always working. Even on, when we're on holiday, we always try to work. We answer emails. We do art critiques. So anyway, Vincent, um, he um, I don't know if he fell in love with this gal that was a prostitute or he just felt sorry for her. But he invited her to move in. And, you know, you've got to imagine that there's probably, this was way back in the 1800s, you know. Um, today, this would be hard for a lot of religions to, to overlook, right? <laughs> Just, and nobody was overlooking that. And the congregation, and he, he would give all his money to the congregation. He was getting so thin, he was starving, okay? And... Um, I'm going to go back with a little blue here. I got this a little dark. It's just kind of come back. If you get, if you overdo it, just come back with a few more colors. You know how to do that, right? Like that. Just don't don't forget to layer stuff. We have some people just <coughs> some people are just joining us now. Can you uh, explain again how to make paints gray if you don't have it? Yeah, if you don't have paints gray, it's just black and ultramarine blue. Or you could do a real dark. If you didn't have any of that, you could do. Um, um, just a black canvas would work, or you could do purple, dazzling purple, and uh, and ultramarine blue, and um, maybe a little bit of um, little burnt umber or cad red medium. Get a real dark color going. That would work too. 
All right, so now you see where we've kind of got this, and we don't have any of the light stuff in yet, but we want to make sure that we've got, here, I'm just going to, I'm going to get some of this lighter color here that we had. I want to come around like this um, and do a few little light ones here, too. Do you see that? And just, just a few. Just sort of, a, you know, we're going to vary the light on here. Do, 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 do. Do, do. It's a little short strokes. This is a little lighter color. Do, 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 do. And I was looking around today for some kind of gold paint, which I thought would be kind of cool. Well, I don't have any, so. Uh, but you might have some iridescent gold, might be pretty. All right, so then I'm not going to put the light, bright color in here. We're just going to move on, let that dry. We've got some lighter colors that go on top of that. But see, it's coming along, you guys, don't you think? So now we want to do is we want to get into the purple and add that to the blue color, a little bit of white, a little bit of purple, maybe a little ultramarine blue now, a little bit of purple, and a little bit more purple, a little bit of Payne's gray in that, okay? Now we want to come this way and start doing some... So this is like the top edge of the wing. Top edge of the wing here. I'm going to put some purple colors coming down like this. We'll put a little bit more blue with that. Okay, but you can, you know, kind of vary the colors a bit. Okay, now we're going to add some phthalo to that. A little bit of white. We're kind of mixing, using a similar palette. See, I keep coming over here. I don't try to change that. You notice I just keep kind of moving off. Now we're just going to come down like this, pinch the brush, and I'm just going to do some longer brush strokes like this. This is the wing. Kind of right over that purple. So and this, there's some little short ones right next to the wing here. And then the same thing over here, just about in here like that, we've got some. It's kind of a neat painting, and I think it's, um, you know, I think this is kind of cool. It's interesting how many um, different beliefs, you know, believe, different religions believe in angels, you know. It's interesting to me. My, um, one of my uh, friends was telling me one day, so I was talking about interesting beliefs, so she was telling me about the people that lived in the middle of the earth, and I'm going, really? <laughs> you know, because what can you say about that? You know, except, I said, are you sure? <laughs> they're probably staying warm. Yeah, I hope they're staying warm. Okay, so let's just come up like this, and then this way, like that, and just follow this around. I'm going to put a little yellow with this, kind of warm that up. Ooh pinch the brush like this. Gonna go around like this. Joop, 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 joop. Hey, would you like to make a little comment about your new Facebook page for our new members? Oh yeah, just talk about the Facebook page. We have a new, what is it to talk about it? I won't talk about it. You guys, you say it. Because I'm <laughs> we, thinking. We've started up a uh, ginger cook acrylic, what do you call it? Acrylic painting, painting, painting club. club. Painting club, yay! Yeah. Painting club. Ginger cook acrylic painting club. It is a private group. And the moderators will pop the URL in there for you to go into it, and you have to answer three simple questions. We're trying to keep the trolls out. It's a very safe haven. We'll take no uh, no misbehavior in this group. It's a good place to show your art. You're only going to get positive feedback. No one's going to say anything ever ugly to you about anything you painted. Everybody's at a different journey on their artwork, and so there's just not anybody else's place to say anything. If you want some uh, uh, honest critique about it, and, and we say that, you know, if you do, really do, okay, want that, then you, that certainly is um, available. Uh, but you, they tell you you have to write CC um, on, yeah, yeah, on your post. Yeah, put, put uh, CC in parentheses if you want to have critical criticism. And sometimes, you know, normally, um, you know, to get that from me, I, you normally have to sign up for my um, website and to get the personal art coaching. But you never know because I'm on there. If I CCC and you never know, you might get a comment from me. Won't be as elaborate as what I do for our members, but you certainly might get a comment from me. Now this is interesting. It seemed to me like this was kind of a little solid here. I'll come back with something on that, but it seemed like that was a little bit more solid. Okay, so now this is interesting. Remember, we're going to go this way and then this way. All right, ready for the this? The traceable for this will be up um, later tonight. I didn't get a chance to get it done. My regular job interfered with my play job. 
Yeah, when John got back from, um, from we, when we got back, what happened was um, everybody wanted his attention like yesterday. And even though he could have handled some of this while we were on vacation, they all yes, wanted they it done me. this afternoon. All right, this is curving like this, you guys. You see this? We're kind of curving this like this. And then that's going back this way. This is important. Let me just make this a little smaller. And we would like to thank Kim for their donation. It says, loving this as always, thank you. Thanks, and thank Kim. you, Kim. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. We just absolutely do. So anyway, yeah, John got swamped with this stuff. And it's a company that, uh, you know, John is a website builder and designer and also maintainer of websites. And um, this big car company that he works for. Um, you know, every time, this happens to all of us, anytime somebody decides to do an update, doesn't ask any of the rest of us whether we think that would be swelled. See, I'm making a little bit of yellow oxide with this. Okay, I'm putting this up here like this. Added just a little yellow oxide and white to this, to the top of this. Like just that. to kind of warm up that, that white. Yeah, to warm up that white, and then we're doing the top of this. It's getting better, you guys. Look at that. Aha! Uh -huh. Like that. Looking good. It's kind of better, right? Now. And somebody's asking, what kind of angel do you think this is? Well, he said it was after Gabriel. He was inspired by the angel Gabriel, so it's some sort of male angel for sure. You see a lot of female angels. You don't see a lot of um, male ones, you know, pictures of males. I guess in the really old stuff you do, but not so much, right? So, um, oh yeah, let's get this one. A little more yellow oxide. It's a little warmer right up around his with a little bit of burnt sienna in it too. Right up around his collar, it's a little kind of got a little brown to it. Could be caught in his hair too when he did it. Probably picked up some of the brown color from his Marina, hair. Marina Marina would like to thank you for making a comment on her painting that she posted in your group. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, I'm happy to do it. I mean, you know, sometimes it's, um, I, you know, I'm, I'll tell you what, you want to just speed up your learning curve uh, with anything, you take lessons. For instance, I can say that when I used to um, a ski, when I was a skier, and, and observed that people that went to ski school didn't break their legs, you know, that paid for the ski, and the tourists that came, if they never skied before, they got a ski instructor, and they rarely ever broke a leg in ski school. It was the ones that said, ah, I'm okay, I don't need anybody. And it's kind of the same thing with, um, with painting. Um, you'll just, you can take years off your learning curve with them. Um, with instruction and so of course you know when you get up on YouTube and you learn things that's really great and when you then you can take advantage and when you can take the ad advantage of personal art coaching where someone can say yeah that's good you did that did you did you notice this and sometimes you know it's only a couple of things but it really helps you see how I'm doing some little light strokes now here kind of going over this with some little light one kind of raggedy light ones and uh, d down here at the base here, we're coming up here with some of these lighter ones here at the bottom. This is all about layers. I hope we have time to finish this. I want to make sure we're finishing this. I think it's kind of a neat one, don't you, John? Yeah. All right, so we're going to go this way now. We're going to come down at an angle. This is interesting to me. Everything's at an angle this way now. I love his angle. See the whole, this is all down at an angle. Um, last night, the painting we did, the artist did the same thing. He just said, this is a, by the angle of the brush, he said, okay, this is a, um, just, the, okay, let me just see where I am. I've got my little iPad here, and I want to come down. I need a little purple, so I want to come this way with some purple, and this way. It's an interesting, almost a herringbone pattern, and add some of this purple color and some of this. And then this one is curving. Some of these kind of curved a little bit. They did this, you guys. There was a little bit of a curve on not all of them, but a couple of them. And then you come in here with the real light ones. And then you add some light ones over it. Seeing a few here. One, two, three, four, stop. Okay. I'm kind of deliberately avoiding his hands right now. Sorry. Check all right. In. So we're, we've got something coming up here like this and then going across this way to indicate a sleeve. 
and then a light one right here and um, and then some little light ones right under here so that's one two and oh yeah some lighter blue ones right here on this one one two over the purple here we go do 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 I mean, you could look at this. Now that you're seeing how I can do it, uh, how I'm doing this, I have great faith that you could just look at this yourself and figure out where to put the little brush strokes. Now that I've explained kind of how you do it, I mean, I think you could do this pretty easily myself. Becky, yeah. we'd like to know, is painting with the gouache similar to painting with acrylics? Uh, you know, I didn't find a lot of difference, except that it seemed like you used a lot less paint, and, um, and, and it was a little smoother for as far as the way it flowed. So I like the gouache paint. It was really nice to travel with. In fact, I ordered, I went ahead when I was at Jerry's today and I ordered um, more paint. Um, the 18 color pack. Eight, the 18 color pack, just because I wanted to see. And then I got, I went ahead and I bought the pack from, um, you know, they'd probably just send it to me if I asked, but I'm not doing that because then I can't, if they send, if I let them send me paint, then I can't tell you what I really think, right? <laughs> and I want to be able to tell you what I really think. I, you always just know what I really think about stuff, don't you think? I think. I think you need to know what I really think. Okay? So look, it's coming along. Isn't that kind of cool? Now this th this part down here, this little bit of ultramarine blue and purple, this is dark down here like that. Kind of just everything down under here is dark. Little short uh, brush strokes. Just, just kind of darker under here. It's not as bright. This is the underside. Little short brush strokes. Like the sound effects. Gotta have the sound effects, it doesn't work. Gotta have the sound effects. And so, um, and now let's see, what could we do? If we took a little bit of that cad red medium and a little bit of white, made a pink color, and added some yellow oxide, now we've got a peach color. Yeah, okay, and now we're gonna add more white and a little purple to that. All right, now we've got this weird color. Well, it is sort of a skin tone, though. All right, now we're going to come here like this. I think I need a tiny brush. Yeah, that's what we need, a tiny brush. And now what we need to do is just come along here on his fingers, on his hand. Okay, like that. So here's his hand there. And let's so come so over you made your own little flesh tone. And yeah, and this one's kind of coming up like this. It was just one, two brush strokes like that, right? This is an 11 by 14 canvas for those that are just joining And I did us. it b bigger because, um, and there was a plan for it. The reason I did it bigger, and then there's a darker part under here, a little more purple, um, a little more purple. Um, I did it bigger because, uh, let's put a little yellow in that. Purple, yellow gray is purple. You guys remember that, right? Um, there underneath his hand like that. All right, so there's a, you know, kind of indicating a hand there, and then I'll, I'll lighten that up in a minute, but this is good enough for now, right? And then we've got a little bit of white here. You're just blocking it in. Getting first layers. Yeah, all right, so there you go. There's, we're getting there, right? So now, if I just leave that alone and come back up here, um, shall we really be brave and tackle that face? <laughs> Let's make the face, you guys. Oh, I remember, Man. I remember when you did the angel face. It took you all day. Yeah, that yeah. was an hour worth of doing the angel face. All right. So we're going to we're gonna come up here. We got that flesh. If you stay in there, I'm going to zoom in on it. Yeah, zoom in on it because this is what we're doing here, you guys. We're going to come along here like this, make this a little darker, a little bit of purple with that, a little bit of cad red medium, a little bit of yellow oxide, make this a little darker. Okay, so guys. now what colors were you using to create your skin? Cad red medium, a yellow oxide, purple, a little white. <laughs> so it's got... Um, and this, everybody would know that. And this is, um, this is the... I'm doing the highlights first kind of, right? Because that's kind of the outside. And I'm going to do the inside of his nose like that. And... Um, okay, so I've got... I just needed those colors. Okay, now I'm going to take some white, come over here with a little bit of um, yellow oxide. There we go. Probably some antique white would be just peachy for this. We have some somewhere. Yeah, but then people might not, so we have to mix it. And you can do that. So and we're going to do stuff. that, and we're going to add just a touch of Payne's Gray with that. 
just to, to tone that down just a hair but it's still pretty light now here's the trick we're gonna come up here like this and we need small little brush strokes just almost tapping it in here so we're really not seeing we're buffering are we yep really right Oh, there's a big difference from where I saw and where you went to. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Okay. So, all right, so we want a little bit of purple and yellow on this side with a little bit of cad red medium. We need a little dark shadow color here. It's almost, let's put some ultramarine blue with that. We need a dark shadowy color here on this side of his face. This side of his face right here is very dark. Okay, it's not black, but it's very dark. And we gotta come in and kind of carve out that nose. And uh, and here's the eyes, like here. And then here too. We're gonna say here's the gonna make that just a little bit lighter, that purple. Just across his eye like that. And then there's a little bit of light right here on his cheek, right like that. A little tricky to do this, but we'll try to get the best we can here with the brushes that we've got here with the small stuff. Okay, and then this is a little darker right up here. Now, um, underneath his nose, I'm going to put my glasses on and really see this. I probably need a smaller brush, but underneath his nose, it's a little bit light right here, like that. And, um, Okay, and um, his chin, almost half his face is uh, um, is that light color, and then you've got a little tiny bit of this kind of, a little bit of lips coming here like that, and um, then the rest of this I'll have to do with probably a pen, but I've got a little bit of this color up here, a little bit right here, with light here. I'm just going to go with lights and darks at this point. That's all we can really do, okay? So we've sort of got this in a little bit, and then up here, kind of close to his collar, we're doing this. And then a little bit of this. Okay, and it's very dark under his chin here. He's got it very dark next to his face, like this very dark it's dark up here it's dark next to here now let's take some burnt sienna and let's start putting his hair in like that maybe that'll help remember the brush strokes are all going th this way they keep changing right and then these go sideways down this way okay and I'm going to take a little bit of cad red medium and yellow and make kind of a brighter orange color. Going to brighten up some of this hair here with my little brush here, like that. Doop, 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 doop. Um, yeah, so we hope you guys will join our, um, you know, hope we invite you to come join our uh, Ginger Cook Art Club on Facebook. And you know what else? We've got some exciting news today. We've got, um, we started our fall art art auction and one of the things that um, is important about that is that in the past we have done a lot of paintings and the auction ended all at once so these are these last two weeks and we're um, and the auctions will all end separately this, they won't all end at the same time they won't all end at the same time because that seemed to um, it was driving everybody nuts drive everybody nuts it was driving me nuts too so, um, because people, you know, couldn't get back, and sometimes it gets fast and furious at the end, right? Here, let's get some light up here on the hair. Do you see what we're doing here? And just a few. Now, here's the trick. When you're trying to do light, it's okay sometimes, all right, to have a little bit of light, but sometimes 
it can be better if you've had a little chance to dry. So particularly, this is the light side of his head, you guys. It's not on the left side or the right side. This is the left side of his head it is the lightest. And um, he actually had some outlining here like that. The traceable will be up on the website after the lesson, sometime later tonight. Yep. And we want something really light right here on his face. Okay, right there, there's something very light here. We want something light up here, something light around his face. You'll notice that I'm wetting some of the dark area um, of the the shadow, the dark area. I have to come back with a pen or something and finish his face. So I'm going to whip that dry for a second, okay? Looks pretty good. You know, it's not, not quite ready, but, you know, we're, we're drying that. And we did, I do like how the fact that these curls came around like this, down around like this. And then let's see, they came down here too, see? They came down and curled around this way. This is cool, isn't it? So, I mean, you know, for, you know, I think that's kind of neat. Let me make that a little lighter. Then we got a little curl going up this way. That's cool. A little bit darker here. Some reddish brown. That's just a little burnt umber to just give it a little balance. Okay, so, all right, so that's, that's there. Yep, that's going there. Okay, so now, while that's drying, Let's come back and do some other stuff. All right, so that's doing that. Getting there though, don't you think, you guys? So I'm gonna go back with some light color and almost the skin tones now. You, not quite. A little bit of white and um, a little bit of burnt sienna. And I want to come up here like this. And first off, let's see. Let's do doop 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 doop, and then. Okay, and then doop, 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 and then... Don't forget the sound effects. Yeah, you got to do the sound effects. you just got to do, do that. Let's put a little more burnt sienna with it. Doop, 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 and then... And then here's the, there was one here all by itself that didn't have a doop, doop. And then doop, doop, and then this. And this, this, right like that. They, he didn't necessarily put these in any kind of order. Does that make sense? They're not spaced evenly. You, you sock folders could certainly space them evenly if it made you feel better. He, he didn't. I know some people would do that. I'm not naming names. Um, no, <laughs> couldn't imagine, you know. So, um... I had a protractor and a compass. I get the angles right. This baby all squared up. I know. Such a male thing. Yeah. All right, so now we've got a few little light ones like this, and let's get the, let's get the, just lighten up more into the white now. Lighten some of this up. One, two, three, stop. One, two, three, a little longer ones. One, two, three. Ha, ah, look at that. See, it's getting there, huh? Um, didn't get so carried away on this side, but here you go, three. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, huh? Neat. Then we gotta go, we gotta change direction now. We gotta go this way. One, two, one, two, one, two. So you can even count. One, two, one, two. Now, here's the trick. Your paint's been drying in the brush. Rinse your brush off, start again. Pinch it, start again. Because the paint's been drying out in your brush. Look how much better the little lineys go when you've done that. Okay, good. Now, now let's see, this comes out this way, like this. Oh, a little bit lighter right here on the shoulder, right across the top of this, we're lightening up. See, you start, start looking at seeing what needs to be lighter, right? <coughs> the shoulder right here, some light stuff coming down on the, the, his, his coat or his shirt. Now, it's gonna get a few little light ones going this way. Because here's what happens to you. Acrylics dry darker. Okay. And so when that happens, that's a little disconcerting. I know it can be. And um, we had something going. 
Oh, let me just change directions here for a minute. We had something right by his hand going this way. So I'll put that light back again. Kind of going down this way, okay? Right by his hand. All right. I'm not trying to be picky, but there it was. All right. So um, let's see what else have we got here. Um, oh, yeah. We've got some lighter blues in here, just in a few places. Just down here and a few short ones down here like that. And um, this is all at this angle right here. This is coming around. Okay. And I need some lighter ones in here. All right, I can see that. There we're kind of a herringbone pattern. Okay, so now if we've done that, which I think we're getting, I think we've got it fairly. Um, I think we're, we've got it fairly um, handled here. Let's take some white, about out of white, make a very light, more of a thalo turquoise light blue. Add a little yellow to it, thalo blue and white, and get a real kind of a sea green what you're looking for very very light sea green color and come up here like this and pull some this way this is your next layer of light stuff that's going here like that uh, doop, 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 doop. so I was going to show you a couple of things I want to let that face dry for one minute okay while we're doing that and um, uh, there's a couple of things that have come up uh, during the week that I want to talk to you guys about. Um, one is, um, I'm going to show you, I've seen some paintings and, and uh, there's some wrong information about varnishing. So two things, I don't want to get too scattered, but you know, this is really, you'll be glad you sat through this whole video just to get this, okay? If I want to draw a coffee cup, okay, um, the sides are going to be straight. Okay, there's our mug, right? The bottom's going to be curved. Now, what I'm getting is this. And if I'm looking at it straight on, you would bear, you want to, you want to practice drawing ovals. See the difference? Pages practice and pages drawing of ovals. ovals. This is just, I, people seem to have real problems with that. And just, just do a, a rectangle and try to fit a circle inside. You know what I mean? If you're having trouble, but practice drawing ovals. This seems to be really, it's amazing to me that something, this is pretty a simple shape, but if it isn't a simple shape in your mind, it doesn't matter how simple I think it is. So anyway, that's what I was going to tell everybody to practice doing. And draw from your shoulder. Yeah, draw from your shoulder. But that, and here's another thing too, that two things I want to show you. This is what you're going to benefit, okay? So I've got I've got something that's doing this, okay? And I want to duplicate that. And for some reason, maybe I don't understand how this angle in my mind doesn't work. So what you want to do, this is um, make a mark. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I know that that point's here. So it's maybe one, two, let's, well, let's see, one, two, three, right? Then I'm going to put a mark here, I'm going to put a mark here. So now I know that I'm connecting these lines. Maybe for this one, I would, if I, see? Now I know it's that angle. So use the side of your picture as a reference, like a graph, to figure out where your lines are going. You don't have to know a thing about anything if you do that. Isn't that good? Perfect. So, all right, so for instance, one thing that's come up lately, I want to show you a few things that uh, we have. Uh, this is uh, some of our auction uh, pieces that we have available right now. Ginger Cook. Uh, uh, currently, currently we have 12 pieces up. There will be a lot more going up as we get time. And they'll all be varnished. Now, I want to show you something about varnishing because, um, again, this keeps coming up. And people, if one, you never shake the varnish. Never. I like, I, nobody pays me to say this, but I'm a big fan of Liquitex gloss, medium, and varnish. Uh, don't I have a smaller one than this, John, somewhere? That's the one we've been using. No, it isn't. 
It hasn't been opened, I don't think, has it? The, yeah. Liquitec medium and varnish. See, I'm not wrong. Just a little one here. We have. All right, there you go. There's a, and this is a handy travel size too. You can refill them with the big one, right? Okay. <laughs> so now this is this nifty brush that my daughter found. This Ar Archer is varnish brush. These are pricey. Um, you can get these at the brushguys.com if you use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word. You can get five percent off. I would never in a million years have, have paid close to twenty dollars for a varnish brush. Never. I would. But once I discovered this, I, just, I couldn't live without it. That's how good it is. So, um, Do you want to put that under some paper, paper under that, so we can move it when you're done? Yeah, I could do that. You got any paper? I do. I got nothing. So, you know, if you got, you got suggestions, I'm happy to do it. I'll do the cat in the meantime, because I'm just going to varnish the cat. Now, look, when you varnish, why you varnish is it brings out the colors, all right? It brings out the colors. It pops the colors and you varnish in the direction of the brush strokes. Do you see that? Now look what it did to the brown. Do you see the difference between the brown? I guess you could zoom in on me. You got some paper? Yeah, here's some old paper we can put this on. You got something better than this. You are one cheapskate. What do you no, got? This, what, what do you mean better? What are you going to do with it? You're not doing well, anything with it's it? It's confusing. All right, go <sighs> zoom in, right? It's just All right, so varnish in the direction of the brush strokes, okay? Always varnish in the direction. If you've got a big piece, hold the cup over it. Uh, do this in really good light. Don't talk on the phone. Now look at this. Now with, for the eyes, I'm going to just kind of go around in the circle for the eyes, this way for the nose. Um, you may have heard some people, I won't mention names, who have told you to go back and forth and up and down. Um, in my opinion, and having done this for years, that can cause a really screwy glare and you might not like it. But if you do it this way, you've got your best chance of success. You let this dry for an hour to a day and give it two coats. Do you see that? See how we're doing that? So I'm just going to show you. There's that one. Um, I'm going to show you. Here's one. I, I want, you can really see how it's going to bring out the colors. This is what I would call a color popper. Now look at this leaf when I do that. Are you really zoomed in? Can you see it? Yes. Now look what happens to the... You can really tell in the background. On the background. See what happened to the background? It brings it out. Now, if you don't like the shine, let this dry for a couple days and then put a matte varnish on top. You'll still have the color, but you can knock back the shine if that's too bright. And rather than, you know, mix that, you know, a, a matte and a, and a gloss together, don't do that. Um, it's better, I think. See how we're doing that and kind of going around each one like that. You see, look at look what it does for the petals, right, like that. Now again, these little pictures that we have, these are original pieces from our lessons. This is called Night Garden, and the bidding starts at 45, which is like a steal. Someone was, I was showing somebody a painting that a gallery had sold mine today on the, on the club that had sold for $12,000, and someone was saying, really? Uh, yeah, the, the collectors, um, you know, we really do um, give you guys, we give you guys t t absolute wholesale on these below gallery cost and below the agent's cost and all that stuff. And again, now what about something like this where you've got a different thing? Well, here's this little bird, right? So if you go up and down here, but short strokes, okay? Um, go up and down. What, the reason you want to hold the cup over it, I saw a guy one time in a class and he, he just, because a big painting, now this is, imagine a big painting, and he's doing this and he gets a drip and he doesn't see it. Well, he goes to it, it dries like a little bubble, and he goes to pe peel it off, and it goes right down to the white canvas. Because this will, you know, this will, what the varnish does, which is, and the reason you want to do it, the medium and varnish, what it does is it bonds molecularly to this. This is like putting a piece of glass over the whole thing. See, I'm going this way with the wing, this way. All right. And um, you don't want to paint too fast because you don't want to create bubbles. But you see here, like that. And this is a beautiful brush; doesn't leave any marks. There you go. So that's how that's how you'd varnish something like this. Now, a larger one, for instance, some of you have been doing. Oh, we've never offered this for sale before. Um, this is part of our Winter Village. I did two, so we've got one of these in the auction of our Winter Village. Now, this is kind of tricky because I'm going to show you. Now, look straight down. Look what the door does, right? Straight down. But now when you do this, this would come this way like that. You're following the brush strokes. It's all, you've got to follow the brush strokes. And you want two coats because this will absorb. 
Now I'm going this way on the bricks, but maybe this way on the snow. All right. And I'm going to come this way and just kind of follow it around and then up here this way, that way. Think about the direction. And if you go over, here's the deal. If you get to talk on the phone or the kids come in and interrupt you or something happens, you know, dog chases the cat through the house and breaks something. <laughs> Um, you may forget where you've been. Maybe you can touch it with your fingers. If you go over varnish too many times, you'll turn it white. Mm. So you just better to skip. Let it dry and do another let coat. It, better to let it dry and do another coat. Now we'll do the sides of this later. I don't want to you know, take a lot of time to show you that. Now, um, uh, one that might come up is um, one like this. This is one of my favorite pieces that we're offering in the auction. Uh, we've never uh, offered a Wave and Water Masterclass piece before. Let me get this out. Of, we've never done that before, all right? And you'll notice that this has got huge amounts of texture. So how would you varnish something like this that has texture? Now, this is really important. Some people would just spray it, but that's not, you know, I don't. That's not necessarily wrong, but I don't. Now, I'm going to show you, like, for instance, here, I'm going to go over the, let's we'll just start here, okay? But I'm being very careful to make sure nothing puddles. So what you have to do, even if it's with a second brush, okay, is you've got to make sure that the varnish in the texture doesn't collect as a as like a uh, like a pool. Does that make sense? And so pay attention to that. If you have to take another brush, doesn't matter what. Just take a take another brush. Let me see. If find another soft brush. And if you think that you know, if you've got a little texture there, mop it up. Does that make sense? Just like that. All right, so that's how you varnish one like this. I won't varnish the whole thing, but I wanted you to say, how would you do something with a little texture? This is really important. See, I'm going down this way, across this way. And again, if you get it, get a little bit of a puddle going, then take another brush and mop it up and do this kind of, do this a little systematically, all right? So that's how you'd varnish something like this. And again, this is one of the Wave and Wetter master classes we've got offered in the auction. Also, when um, you're varnishing uh, something, say, like this. Now, this was one of my favorite ones. This was um, Rose Gate, okay? So I want you to really see. Now, these flowers are nice. Are you zoomed in pretty good on this, John? All right. Where are you going to be down in the flower? Right down in here. I want you to see it. We don't do the whole thing. You know, she's, now, look what happens to the color of these flowers when you do this. Can you see? It's important to varnish your pieces, and this is this this stuff is designed exactly for that, right? Now, I'm I'm not doing every little dot, but I but I'm not going across and up and down either. I'm kind of doing this almost like parentheses strokes, like like parenthesis. Does that make sense? Or half a C, and you know, like that and coming down. Now, look what it does to the colors, and it's going to bring out the dark greens too. And do this in very good light like that. Do it in very good light and uh, sign it before you varnish it. That'll seal your signature right in. Now when you come up here, look at what it did to these orange flowers. You see how it popped them in the brick? You see that? And then look, look I just want you to see the brick to kind of do this half of it. Again, I won't do the whole painting. I just want you to see the difference even up in here, this half of the, this half of the, um, where the tree is in the greenery, look at that. See, and here's the brick. It's going to stop right there like that. Let you see the difference when you varnish. You know, it really, really brings the colors out. And then again, this will dry. And look for, kind of hold it up like that. Keep it flat. Don't, don't varnish it vertically, but make sure you don't have any drips anywhere. High spots that you have to mop up, okay? kind of go around it. So th I think that's probably a better explanation of how to explain people how we're going to how how to varnish. Now, this brush goes in water and this I needs to be really it. washed well with soap and water. These are expensive but they last. You can get the varnish out. Um, but you really want to wash them well. Soap and water and John's going to take it right now and wash it. So that's I I think that's one of the things. Not only kind of show you what we're doing with our auction um, and the Ginger Cook Live on the auction, but I wanted you to see um, how you know how to how to create something like that and how to really get it. 
Okay, so my next step here is to, this has had a chance to dry pretty well. And I've got, um, oh yeah, here they are. Um, I've got a pen, I've got a black pen. And for me, I'm gonna use a little bit of a black pen on this. Um, and I'm gonna get um, my iPad just like this. I'm gonna just show you. I'm gonna get that iPad and I'm gonna blow it up so I can really see it. Does that make sense? I, it's important for, I'm really, for me to paint anything, it's important for me to see what it is I'm painting. That's, that's sort of a key thing for me. Is this zoomed in enough, John? Do you think so, if you were here? You, am I zoomed in enough? I think so. I've got it squared up on you. Okay. What are you, what are you working on, the face? The face. Give me one second. John's going to kind of zoom in and make sure you can see it. I want you to see why I'm doing it this way. Because when I can see that, um, You know, so it's going to be a combination, probably pen and a small brush. At this point, I need a very small brush to be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I need a little purple and, let's see, I don't have any more white out. I'm going to put, this is where you might want, uh, look, a fluid acrylic, like um, Golden makes a half, a little tiny bottles of this. You should really buy, again, they don't tell me to say this, a little tiny bottle of white, maybe an off-white, maybe a brown most likely to use those colors. We want a little bit of a light purple here. Um, now to gray the purple, we can put a little Payne's gray in it, or we could have done yellow. That would, either one would have grayed the purple. A little tiny yellow would, yellow will gray purple because it's opposite on the color wheel. So he's got some purple going like this, right up here on his nose. And since I can see it with the iPad, I've got a shot, you guys, it's sort of seeing what we're painting here, okay? I mean, not a great shot, but here's a little bit of a, here's a little bit of a, uh, this purple around, just a little shadow right here by his nose, and then down here by his mouth, on the side of his mouth, right here, and under his lip. And then I'm gonna say that his chin has got this purple color, like this. Like that, and I'm gonna, it's got a little tiny bit of, probably magenta in it. I'll add a little cad red medium, kind of warm that up on this side. Uh, maybe a tiny bit more purple. There you go. All right, so we're gonna warm this up right here. And say this is the purple on his face, right like that. All right, now um, there was a little tiny bit of um, burnt sienna just for the top of his eyelid like that. I'm using the dark background. I'm going this way, this way, on the top of his eyelid with a little bit of that. And let's see, what else have we got that I can use? That and a little bit of purple. You see, kind of mixing colors as I go. Kind of a browning color. Now, this way, a little bit lighter right there. Okay, he's got a lot more colors than we're going to put in right this red hot second. But we can maybe do this. And, um... Here, let's just come up with a little Payne's Gray. Before I get into the pen part, I want to come up this way with his nose. And I want to come this way with the eye. And just, there you go, something like that. Like this. Little tiny, everything's little tiny brush strokes. And there's a little shadow under here. Very dark shadow, this side of his face, around his nose. And then right under his uh, lip, there's a dark shadow here and there, kind of almost like the letter A. And um, here's it right by his chin. And let's see what else can I do here. Kind of curve around his nostril. And then there's a little bit of a dark shadow. Let's see. Here's where you might want to spray a little tiny bit of water on your paintbrush and kind of roll it and then get all right, so there's a little bit of dark right under here like this. And a little bit of dark coming this way on the top here. This is pretty dark right here. And this is pretty dark right up here. Um, here's his eyebrows coming up into here like this. And then there's some dark going this way over that purple kind of dark on this side of his head. And then he's got 
almost paints gray and purple. He's got something pretty dark going around like this. Kind of the outside here. Kind of going this way. And next to his face like that. He's got it pretty dark right like that. We're getting it, John. You're doing I'm good. I'm going to do not have to do the pen. Sometimes it just, you know, you can paint anything if you can see what it is. Does that make sense? If you, you know, and if you can, if it, we did this a little bigger, this picture, we did it a little bit bigger so that you could, um, got a little part up here, a little bit of water. Um, right here, we did a little part on his hair. There's something dark up here on his head. Like that. Now let me see. Can you hold that brush underneath the camera for us? In, this is a, a a silver ultra yeah, mini a pointed round twenty four zero zero S. Yeah, it's a twelve zero. Thank you. And um, we were debating which one it was. Um, I could do a little bit more on the mouth. That's really there's a lot of colors in that mouth. Let's see if I can figure that out. All right, so we've got a highlight of some kind. Just this is interesting now. It's almost like a puzzle. It's like making your own puzzle pieces. Does that make sense? So there's a little bit of a light highlight right here. And there's a little highlight right here on his lip, right like that. And then underneath here it kind of goes this way. Like that. And then it got really light right here right here where his chin is like that this got really light right there and again we're not gonna spend too much time with doing this but we're gonna just go over the face a little bit lighten it up how'd we do pretty good huh you looks did pretty marvelous. good looks pretty good now we got something really light right down here on his nose and then here's this, ooh, come on. A little bit that like that. Right like there on the bridge of his nose, a little bit lighter. And right here, that was light right there. Okay. So, uh, this was lighter here, right like this. This was lighter here. Let's put a little bit of white and yellow oxide, I think is what I want to do. Some sort of a lighter color. And uh, now I'm going, this is our next light color. Does that make sense? I want to remind the, uh, some of our members that are watching are our yearly members and their subscriptions are coming up. You got to get an email shortly. We're going to be offering you the same special deal we did last year. We have limited positions on those. I just want to mention a couple of people are asking about when their renewals are coming up. So be looking for that later this week with any luck at all. All right, you guys. That's looking pretty good. Let me back out a little bit because we got really fine detail. All right. And you got to look at it more of a proper perspective. And then I think I've got a, it's got a little bit of light right here on his cheek, right here, like this. Kind of almost burnt umber in white. Right under the eye right here, there's a little bit of light. Right like that. A little bit of light coming around this side of his face. Which I think, and then we're going to do some light. Just kind of a little burnt umber in white, I think, probably. Or burnt sienna, rather. And we're just going to come across here like that, put some light highlights in his hair. Again, you know, maybe you know someone that needs an angel. I just, um, life happens to people and think that things are swimmingly going along and then something happens unexpected. And I think, I think if you take a little time with this, you might find just the perf perfect place to either hang it in your house or perhaps you know just the person that needs an angel right now. And um, I think that's very nice. All right, so we're going to start throwing in the, let's see, come on. Almost you need to get, for each brush stroke, you almost need to get paint, which is interesting. 
that flow's helping me a little bit, but you almost need to get that's don't want it quite that light. There you go. This is coming down here like that. It's the outside of his hair like that. What do we do? Pretty good, huh? There's some of this here like that. I, I think you could do gold up in here is what I was saying. He's just, I th to me, I'm going to do a little yellow oxide and white now. And, um, and again, I think you could do, he's got some little like circular things happening here. Um, again, when you're using a brush this little, you almost have to get about three brush strokes and you got to reload your brush because otherwise nothing's happening. Lighten this up. As acrylics grow darker on you, as you may have noticed, okay? I think I can put this back up here now. And I think we're, we've got a pretty good good face on here now, John. Yes. A little bit of paint right here. I want this a little bit lighter right here under the nose. Up here in the head. And... Uh, light right there. Okay, so now I'll come back down here and do the hands doing that same thing. I want to just blow those hands up. And really, it was interesting, you didn't really see much of the fingers. Um, yellow, maybe a little white. You didn't see it's one, two, and then he had three little strokes like this. A little bit of a light thing here. Indicate a finger here. See one, two, three, something like that. And then over here, um, what we've got is a little bit of burnt, you know, purple and red for a dark color. Burgundy, burnt, uh, burgundy would have been good too. And we're going to come pinch the brush that so we're just doing a point and we kind of put those in like this we're just sort of we're just going to kind of almost draw them in he did a little thumb coming up here like that which I guess we could do um, he's got this little thumb that's coming this way and there's different colors on his fingers too it's just not one color on the hand there's different colors on this hand, but you can get a little crazy doing all this too. So, I mean, I think if you get pretty close to this, you're going to be um, fairly close. How's that? Which, of course, that would be fairly close if you're getting close to this. And then right next to the hand, it's very dark. And there's some brush strokes going this way. That's the trick. Just kind of put some shadows places. How many, doubt, uh, how many cookies would you put on this little lesson? Well, because you can trace it, I think you could do it. I think you could do it in two cookies. Most of the brush strokes are pretty self-explanatory. You know, you know what I'm saying? They're pretty easy, and you could come back and um, let's just let's just get some water on this paint's gray. I want it more no, fluid. we're buffering again. Are we? Yep. Okay. Hasn't come back yet. What are we doing here, guys? There we go. We're back. We're back. Okay, so you can see where what I've done was I've taken the tape off now, kind of get it got a sense of um, where we are. Except I lost my picture. There we go. Okay, so now what he had, and this is where we're going to do it with tape to make this kind of work here, right? Is uh, we're going to take some tape now. And we're going to come along here like this and put in our window. Um, our window frame. So I want to just take tape together and put, make it about this wide, like that. Okay. 
and I'll squish that down. I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm going to take a just some sort of brush with some dark paint here, and we're going to paint that out. Oh, very nice. And um, we'll do the other side. Yeah, there's just this kind of these small things that, that kind of work. And then I want to put some gold up in here, up on his, on, up, up in here. So I think these are good things that, that to do. And let's see, let's just say that's our edge here. When you're doing tape, hold it between two fingers and pull it. You see that? And then just kind of line it up and then just start it and put it down. You make yourself a longer piece than you need. Tape's cheap. This is artist white artist tape. Um, I'm not a big fan of blue painters tape because I can take the paint off. This is designed for acrylics and paint doesn't take it off. Though if you're going to be on paper now, doing something on paper, then you've got to get some water special tape. But 3M makes a tape for watercolor paper and that's not going to tear the paper because you can, you know, tear your paper depending on the kind of paper you have. But canvas. This works like a champ, though tape will not stick to wet paint, you guys. All right, so you saw where we did that, right? Now, what do you think? We've got our, um, now he had a, um, I think that that, I think that that's fairly, um, I think we're in good shape there. Now I'm going to take that black pen. Remember I told you we had a black pen? And, and this is a fine point um, Posca pen. And I want to do that on some of this. I'm not going to get the... I just don't spend, want to spend hours getting these fine points, but it's so much easier to do this. This dries. Um, in about five minutes, and um, so if you're having trouble getting these thin brush strokes, and they're particularly like up here on the wings, you need to get you need to refine this a little bit like this. And you can use a brush, but the pen's okay too. This is what kind of we had a chat about this the other day about what do we consider cheating? You know, what is considered cheating in art? And um, um, you want to use the tools. I mean, there would be some people years ago when Van Gogh was painting, okay, who might have thought that um, using a camera was cheating. All right. Have you thought about that? Might have thought that that was cheating. Now, there's, this is an outline. I want you to notice this. We're not outlining it. What makes the shape on this is the colors, all right? Like, for instance, here, what's making the shape on this, um, this coat, what's making the shape on it, let's just make, mix that color again, in um, a little bit more thalo blue, a little bit of paint gray. What's making the shape here is... Um, like for instance, this is coming down into here like this, and then this is coming under here like that. So the edges, it's brush strokes are making this, um, not lines, okay? Not lines, it's brush strokes, not lines. That's very important, like for instance, the edge of these wings here. You know, go back and see where you need to lighten things up because as you're doing it, you're gonna notice that things dry Again, if you haven't been subscribing to us, we'd love it. Do we have any questions, John? I've just been yakking on here, explaining um, how to do this. I'm going to say no because we've been answering them. You guys uh, have been answering them? Okay, good. Because I'm, I'm sorry. Well, the only get... question that really came up was, they're looking at the thumbnail that I have of the image, and they're, they're saying the face does not look like it has that much detail or texture in it. And I explained to them, well, when you look at the original and blow it up, there's a lot of brush strokes in there. Oh, ton. Yeah, it just appears. It appears very smooth on their little one-inch square. So.
there just a few little highlights on that a few little highlights over here on this edge of our wood here like this I think you could pro probably I mean I like how he did it you can see how he's got the highlights here I think I'm almost tempted to you know bring this in a little bit make it a little lighter on the edges here I think that's very pretty and um, I think we've got our blue green stuff here and uh, want to go up a little bit lighter than that and a little bit lighter here there's values thing this is your grayscale okay so if you did a black and white drawing of a, a photograph of your painting make sure that you've got all the lights and darks in the right places you you know if you have to do a black and white of his picture too and then compare yours and make sure that you've got enough of the lighter highlights because this is a real um, it's maybe nothing's quite you're not thinking it's that white but um, there is definitely some places in here that are lighter and you want to you want to get those because that's um, will make a difference to how it looks okay so I think um, I need to do one more thing on the face John when I stand back from it and look right I want to get my I want to get um, can let's see I want to come up a little bit underneath his eye like this and just make it a little bit finer right like that I had it just And again, you could spend some time on the little face too, you know, but I think if you get it this far, you'll be pretty good. Okay, there we go. Just sort of lighten up that face right like that and like that. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So, all right, you guys, let's see, are we going to do any of the yellow oxide on this for a little gold? And again, if you had any, I think you could do some, a little bit of gold on here, and I don't think it would be a miss. Just a kind of a little bit of a gold, just, and then maybe a little bit of gold in the hair. This is gingerizing it a little bit, but that to me, I mean, I mean, angels mean different things to different people, but um, just in a few places, I think it wouldn't hurt to have put a dry brush, just some gold on here like that. And you're using the yellow oxide for just, your gold? Just yellow oxide for the gold and then just dry brushing some on like that. And I kind of like that, don't you? Because, I mean, that's what I remember about angels from, you know, kids, you know, picture books with kids. Okay. And the same thing here, if I was going to put um, uh, some highlights on, on here, like on his hair. Okay. And... Uh, uh, Lynn would like to know, would zinc help with the light white on the angel? Um, zinc might help. Um, I could show you what that would do. Here's like zinc. Zinc is a very semi-transparent semi transparent white. And obviously we could use some more light here. True? So here's some pure zinc white, and I'll show you what it does in case you're wondering. It will add a little bit more light color because it did. My light just keeps disappearing, doesn't it? I put it on there and then you're seeing it and then you don't see it and we need a little more impact than we have so there you go I, th I think that's an excellent suggestion I might just add a little bit of highlights with the under under color still coming through it yeah yeah that that's exactly right just a little, little little highlights with the under color coming through it and I, I think that that's not a miss here to do that kind of emphasizes wings a little bit you know, maybe they're coming up like that. There were some lighter sections right here. And um, here, and then on his coat. And just a couple, you know, you just, you don't need to overdo it, but sometimes a couple of 
well-placed brush strokes, nothing down in this area, but some well-placed brush strokes in a few places, even here on the on the windowsill, and then even here on the edge, like that. Just not not wrong. Let's see, even dark here. There was some real dark right here, right there. See that? Just when you go back and say, where's the dark? Or, where's the little purple? And there was some dark purple. You know, and this was dark right here, just down in here, the purple. And purple makes sort of a nice, you know, nice color. And it was very dark right next to here, right to the edge of his coat. It was dark right here. So see how that sort of brings his coat out when you do that? And his back up here to the light. There, okay. Well, so um, anyhow, um, that's what we've got for that's what we got going here, you guys. I hope you'll I hope you had fun doing this. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, we'd invite you to do it. John, do you have what we're doing for while you're up? Do you have what we're doing for um um for our members, for um, we're doing a Van Gogh, another Van Gogh, for Is our it members. The one I was walking around with earlier. Yes, yeah, the one that just it's, it's the one that you know we've got another really cool Van Gogh here. Let's just get some light going here. It's this one, right? Yep. We just need it brighter around his face. All right. I, I, I'm honestly, you could spend some time on this. You know what I mean? Just fooling around with a few lighter brush strokes, but. I think we're good. All right, so this this week, if you're a Van Gogh fan, of course, we've got a wonderful playlist on YouTube. I've just looked that up. Our Van Gogh playlist got some great Van Vincent Van Gogh pieces. And we have probably about 10 others on our website, uh, gingercooklive.gallery, for our members. This is the one we're going to be doing this week. It's a two-cookie lesson. I love it. It's these very, very textured um, uh, flowers and kind of in a fall vase with the glass and everything. And this is... Um, uh, really a fun one to do and I got, this is 8 by 10 but of course you could do it larger kind of get the sense of how you're going to do it this is one of his Vincent van Gogh's pieces he did so many pieces in the 10 years that he was painting is that and one that you modified the base is that that one no okay this is exactly what he had okay so it was the other one yeah this All is right. what, what exactly what he had so anyway that's what we got going for you guys and now, we uh, had a couple questions in regards to our memberships. Let me try to clarify a few things, because I guess I put people into a panic mode. Currently, we have on gingercooklive.gallery, you have two separate libraries of lessons. We have what's called the Wave and Water, which is a master class, and it focuses on waves and water, thus the name. Then we have what's called the Video Lesson Library, which currently has over 300 and over 300 lessons. I think we're pushing 400 now. Those are available on a the Video Lesson Library is available as a seven-day membership for 9.95. You can do that any time you ever want. You can sign up any as many times as you want under the seven-day plan. With that, you do not get the personal art coaching. You get just the lessons and access to all 300, whatever in the video lesson library. If you're a monthly or a yearly subscriber, you would have access to all the lessons in the video lesson library, as well as Ginger's personal art coaching, where you can send in your work as you're working on it, and she will send back to you her comments and suggestions. And let me zoom in a little bit while she's working on that face for you. Yeah, I just feel like I need to make this a little wider up here. Let me just do that up here, here like for that. you to catch those. Now, the Wave and Water, you can either have a Wave and Water membership or you can have a membership to both. Um, the Wave and Water gets a new lesson once a month. Sometimes they get a bonus lesson if we do something special, but they're guaranteed at least one new lesson every month. And their, their lessons are longer, more involved. That's why it's only one a month. Whereas the Video Lesson Library, they get a new one every week. And those lessons are different than the ones you see on YouTube. They're more complex, more involved, 
and it's just Ginger talking. You don't have me, you don't have Sammy, you don't have all the chit chat going on. So it's just focusing on the lesson. Now, some of you heard me mention that we have a yearly a holiday special and we have some people that signed up last year under what was called our holiday special. That's a yearly membership and they also got 12 downloadable lessons during that as a special. Those people are going to have the right to sign up again and, and renew their membership to do it again. And we have a limited number of spots on that because it takes a lot of my time to do all the download stuff and take care of it. So we have a limited number of spots. So we won't know if there's anything available to the general public until we hear back from our members, our current membership. So once we know that, we will announce it and put it out and make it available for a limited, until the, until the slots are filled. Our prices will be going up January 1. If you are a current member, your prices do not change. But if, you're, if you stay current, it's whatever you say, signed up as. Yeah, you signed you, up your three grandfathered years ago, in forever, you, you, those yeah, prices. You grandfathered in forever at whatever price you signed up at, no matter what we do. Hopefully this will be the last increase. We've had a lot of um, equipment, paint. We're doing, we're doing a lot more painting, a lot more equipment, and a lot more internet. You know, our internet bill went up drastically trying to solve this YouTube problem. So we well. have to cover those costs. That Now you know the story. If you have any questions about our membership, please go to gentlecooklive.gallery, use the contact us form, and let us hear from you. I'll get off my high horse. No, I think that's good, John. I think that was important to mention all that. You know, I love acrylics because they go darker on you. And so you <laughs> think you have the colors, and then you, you turn around and look, and then you don't have them, which is, you know, you're going, man, I, you know, it's like Groundhog Day. I swore I put that color there, and I turn around and I look, and it's something else, all right? So Now, now the, the gouache didn't do that, did it? No, not as much. That, they kind of held their color. Got to bring this chin over a little bit. See, I'm gonna bring his chin down. Just, just on a face. Sometimes two brush strokes can make a huge difference. I think what's interesting about people is that think of all the millions of people that are on the planet, and you might think someone looks like somebody else, but it's we are all so just a line on a face makes somebody look completely different. And yet sometimes you can look at a kid, for instance. And you can kind of get a sense of what they'll look like when they're 20. You know what I mean? Well, of course, you can well, see I their couldn't. parents. My kid didn't come out like I thought he would. Really? No. What I thought he'd still have hair. What? I thought he'd still have hair. He had a great set head of hair. Did he? Oh, yeah. All the way through, I'm going to say, what, 8th, ninth grade? 8th grade, ninth grade? Yeah? Yeah. He had this beautiful hair. Oh, it was gorgeous. Curly locks. Yeah. But he got his mother's side of the family of the hair, or lack thereof. There's a little light right here, you guys, right here on this side of his face, right here. <coughs> Any he opinion of so-called color fast acrylics? I've never heard of color fast acrylics. Have you heard of color fast acrylics? No. No. We don't have an opinion. We have no opinion. No opinion. But you know, people can give themselves any title. <laughs> I like Her Majesty for me. Does that sound good? But you, you probably don't believe I'm royalty, but you can call me that. <laughs> yes, Your kidding. Majesty. It sounds good, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Your At Majesty. At least it me. Yeah. Yes, there you go. I like that. Just keep it up, John. Keep it up. Her Majesty, that's it. And then there was this little tiny, I can't find that little brush anymore that I was using. I put it somewhere and it's gone. <laughs> Great. I had a little brush, but now I just need a little bit there on the mouth. Okay. All right, I'll stop. I think that's about the best I can do on this face right, I'm gonna for tonight. I'm going to back her out, see what we got. Back, back me out. How do we do? Oh, I'm liking that. So I'm liking the gold. I thought the gold made some nice highlights. Didn't you think so? Yeah, I do. And I'm just, I've got the gold here, and I'm just going to, here's a little bit of gold, a tiny bit of cad medium with it, just in a couple places. I just want that brighter. Just in a couple places on his head. I don't know, just on this side, you know what I mean? Just wanted it a little bit brighter there. Just just sort of the, I just wanted to give the impression of radiance. How's that? Radiance, does that sound radiance, good? Radiance, absolutely, perfect word. A radiance, I wanted, I wanted radiance to come through. If you get too, if you overdo it, just put a little black back. 
he got carried away. But I felt like there needed to be this sort of, to me it's a glow, isn't it? A glow kind yes. of thing? Yes, yep. There's this glow that, um, um, that happens. There, again, again, we're just talking about the light. Look at the difference. Look, th look at that color. You could sit here and play forever, couldn't you? Well, you can just keep, at, I mean, it's pretty. You, just, you, you know what I mean? I guess at some point you should stop, but I mean, it is kind of neat, right? There we go. Oh, man, I like this, don't you? Yeah. I'm liking this. All right, so this was fun. I'm glad we did it. I've talked about forever doing doing his angel. I hope you guys had fun. And if you, you know, blow up a picture of his and really study the nuances of color, it's quite a, it's a, the, col the mixing the colors isn't that hard to do. Um, again, he has, if you look at that, he's, you know, again, if you did it black, you could scratch some of this out. There's some almost crisscross patterns in some of this using my pen here just for these little fine lines up here in the up here like that but um, there you go I will right, just come down can I sign it now that's the question that comes up Van Gogh did it the copyrights out on this there's no longer copyright on this so yes you could sign it I'm not doing a white pen I want you to see why see how white this pen is very he had white. a little bit of white right here that I could just maybe do just like that. But you can see how white that pen is, yeah? Then there's nothing that white on him. But I might just come along here like this and sign it. Monica's oh. asking, is Ginger using a clipboard to brace her hand? I'm not sure where she's seen a clipboard, but you no. don't brace your hand with anything. No, not using nothing. I don't see the red. I, I, there was no red coming out. Oh. <laughs> Very astute of you, John. <laughs> well, I you hate know, to miss it. grass anything. doesn't grow <laughs> under this fan's heat. So, all right. So, we're going to see you guys live next week. We'll do something fun. I'm, I'm kind of out of ideas. If you've got any ideas of what you think would be fun to paint, you know, tell me. Because, like I say, I'm kind of out of ideas. I want to bring this face in a little bit. There you go, like that. Just a little more chiseled here, like that. There we go. The men's faces are much more chiseled than women's and uh, there's that chin coming down here like that there you go all right I'm, I'm just having fun with this but again a person could play with this for a while but we won't I, I mean, I'd love to hear your suggestions tell your friends about us and yeah. you know and you know I'd, and again, uh, love and light to my friend Nancy. And, um, uh, and if you've got love and light to everyone that needs an angel right now in their lives, I hope this uh, maybe uh, brought some joy to your evening. Thank you. Good night, John. Good night, Sammy. Night, Ginger. Bye. I've been on camera today. Oh, Sammy been on camera? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, night, Sammy. Night, everyone. We'll see you next week at on uh, Monday at 7:30 Central, and Monday and Tuesday are our live days. We will see you then. Good night, everyone. Bye. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Gin means the world to me.